behind me? My name is Deborah, and this is my channel Stitch the Stash. Today is Sunday, November 3rd. It is Marathon Sunday here in New York City, and we have a glorious, beautiful day that is perfect marathon weather. I believe our highs in the 50s. It's blue skies with some cloud cover, but the sun is shining through, and great day to have a race here in New York. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If this, if this is the first time you've checked my channel out, welcome. I hope you enjoy. My channel is all about cross stitch and occasionally I do throw in uh, knitting, quilting, and book reviews. Um, so yes, it has been quite some time since I was here with you last uh, doing an update video. It has been just over a month. I did put out two videos a couple of weeks ago. One was my second stitch with me, and thank you everyone who has watched, liked it, and left me a comment on it. I truly appreciate it. And I have done um, a color and cotton Halloween full uh, box unboxing for everyone, but those, you know, uh, everybody has received theirs, so I'm sure those um, videos and pictures on Instagram have made the rounds. Um, but yeah, I have not been here for a while for an update video. It's life. Um, as some of you may know who follow me on Instagram, um, uh, we took Chloe to a, a cat specialist vet the other weekend to have an ultrasound done of her stomach. And I want to thank everyone for the well wishes on her. She is doing well. Um, we have been experiencing some stomach issues with her ever since we adopted her from the outside two years ago. And our current vet um, didn't seem to think it was a big issue but we did so we found someone that is about on a good day with no traffic it's a 30 minute drive north of us here he is a cat specialist we um love him and he uh we had actually brought another cat to him um like another cat that we recently trapped from the outside that was a friendly cat we took him um the cat to this vet because he needed to have um, special anesthesia because he needed to be neutered and long story short the original intake of him in the shelter said that he had a heart murmur but he turned out not to but this vet um, did use a special anesthesia on him so he's well and he's actually um, been adopted uh, with his new owner one of Manny's co-workers adopted him for us um, so happy happy ending with that one but Anyway, so when we saw him, we asked him about Chloe's um, issues, and he immediately gave us um, a plan. He said, I would do an ultrasound of her stomach, and I guarantee we would find something. And we potentially did. Um, so we have a plan in action for her. She, her issue is not life-threatening. Um, we ruled out cancer or anything like that. She just has um, mild chronic pancreatitis and possibly IBD. And he did say if she has IBD, that's in very early stages. So right now we are just giving her some anti-nausea medication and some Pepsid medication for a month, um, just for five days on, two days off, and see if that helps with her, um, her stomach issues. Um, so far she's doing well. And I want to thank everybody um, for your concern on my Instagram post about that. So anyway, um, so yes, yesterday we took Shanna up there. We love this vet so much. We are having behavior issues with Shanna ever since we brought in Chloe. The two do not get along, so we brought him, uh, brought Shanna up to see him. We have some hopeful outcome um, with that visit. Uh, we... We will see how things go. Our, our plan is just to get these two cats to coexist. They do not need to love each other. They do not need to be best friends. We just want them to coexist. And Shanna is our little problem uh, child who's having an issue um, accepting Chloe. And it's been way too long. 
So yeah, so we've been busy going to vets. We've been to the vet three times in the past three weeks um, with three different cats, but that's okay. I am here to share <clears throat> my stitching with you, and I have a lot to share. I have finishes, I have whips, and I have new starts. So let's go ahead and get started. I have three finishes for you today, so let's go ahead and plow right into them. The first one is I Want a Black Cat by Madame Chantilly. I have finished this bad boy. I started it February 5th of this year and finished it on October 11th of this year. It is stitched on a 32 count Belfast linen in the color Stormy Night and it's all DMC colors. And I absolutely love it. I am super thrilled it is finally done. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to FFO it. Uh, the original pattern shows it as a pillow. I might do an oversized flat fold. I'm not sure, but uh, it felt so good to get this project off the hoop. It, cause it's, you know, it's on the little bit of a bigger side. This was a $17 stitch from stash credit and I'm glad it's done. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, my only issue with the chart is that it's in black and white and all the back stitching is in black and white and the back stitching uses three colors. So you have to kind of compare the chart to the cover photo to see what color is supposed to be used where, um, but that's okay. And I absolutely love how this cat turned out. Look at that cat tail. It's a little freaked out because she's painting it black, but I absolutely love it. So this is my first finish. My second finish is, it's Little House Needleworks July Sampler Thread Pack. I have finished it. I started this on May 19th of this year and I finished it on October 19th of this year. Um, it is stitched on a 28 count Lugana in the color Mushroom and this is a $5 stitch from Stash Credit. I absolutely love how this turned out. Those pinks are just gorgeous. And the contrasting blues of the flowers on the bottom, I love it. Um, I believe this is my third monthly sampler that I have completed out of the 12. I do plan on starting at least one more this year. But um, yeah, my plan of finishing them all this year just kind of went out the window when I joined Magical Stitches. But that's okay. I have this one done, so that makes three. And my last finish is Alice's Mad Plant by Bendy Stitchy, Michelle Garrett. I stitched this on 36 count linen by Luminous Fiber Arts in the color Indigo. And I love how this turned out. I used um, all the called for DMC threads, except for the red. That is a Victorian motto in the color vampire red. Um, but everything else is the called for. And I think everything turned out so pretty on this blue fabric. And this was my first time um, stitching on 36 count linen and this made me fall in love with it. I started this on sept oh, September. I started this on July 18th and finished it on October 19th. And this is an $8 stitch from Stash Credit. Um, my plan is to finish it on a trivet. Um, when a, you know, in tribute to uh, Michelle, Michelle because um, she started the trivet uh, craze, I think. And um, I think this is befitting a trivet finish. So whenever I come across one that fits, um, I will FFO it into that. It's time for whips. I have eight whips for you today. Um, like I said, it's been over a month since I've last recorded. And what I've done during the past three weeks um, <clears throat> for Magical Stitches, I've tried to use some of the same projects so I don't have like 20 whips to show you. So I have eight because I could make the same four projects work every week, but that's okay. So the first project I have for you is 
Geranium by Nora Corbett. Absolutely love her. Um, this is where it was at the last time you saw it. I am stitching it on a 28 count cashel linen by Silk Weaver in the color Cinnamon Roll. And this is where I'm at with it. I have got quite a bit of progress done on it. Um, everything I'm showing you I have used for Magical Stitches and I have used her for a few assignments and as you can see I have more of her dress filled in and then I have more of her wings um, completed because one of the assignments was to stitch on purple. I believe it was like 200 stitches so I worked more on the wings. So that is where I'm at with her. The next project I've worked on is Button Box by Blackbird Designs. And the last time I showed it, I forgot to tell you that you can find this pattern in the book in Friendship's Way. I do believe this book is out of print. I had a very hard time finding it and I ended up finding it on eBay um, for it a normal price so um maybe i just got lucky with it but that is where button box can be found in friendships way by blackbird designs this is where it was at the last time you saw it i am stitching it on a 32 count linen um by barbaral creations in the color brick dust and this is where I'm at with it. I have got a lot more progress done on it. Um, I think the last time I showed it to you, I had some this the progress on the house. That's all I had done with this vine going up the side. Then I have focused mainly on the center. I've used this for a handful of magical stitches, anywhere from 300 to 200 stitches at a time and I've made quite a bit of progress on this. I absolutely love it. Um, I think I'm putting off finishing the house until the end, but who knows. Um, I love the colors. I am using the called for, um, I believe there's a combination of gentle arts and classic color works. Don't hold me to that. I have to look at the pattern to confirm that, but I'm using all the cotton floors and I absolutely love with how far I've gone with this one. My next whip is Arranging Tools by Ink Circles. I started this one as a potential Christmas present if I can get it done in time. Um, this is where it was at the last time you saw it. I am stitching it on a the 30 count linen by Weeks Dye Works in the color Baby's Breath. And this is where I'm at with it. I've got quite a bit of more progress done on it. This for a while had been my lunchtime stitching. And um, at one point I had this center level, I believe that's what it is, completed. But I had to rip the whole thing out because I made a mistake. So I then decided to work around it. And um, this is the halfway point and everything you see on this side is mirrored on this side. Um, it is a very quick stitch. I just need to um, focus on it if I'm going to have it done in time for a Christmas present. That is still my hope. Um, for this being such a simple pattern, I can't believe how many mistakes I have made. I've had to rip out three mistakes and I've put everything back in except for that center motif. But we'll see. We will get there. Hi, guess what? As I was editing my video um, and I was going over my eight whips, um, my video became corrupt. So I only got through the first three. And what I'm going to do is now insert pictures of where the remaining five whips are currently at um, because I'm, I'm losing my light, as you can see. And um, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to re-record that section. So here are pictures of my last five whips and then my video will pick back up um, where I show you my new starts.
time for my new starts. I did have three new starts. They all happened within six days of each other at the end of October. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple of um, items that go in my haul, um, just simply because I have them sitting here. I have um, a new Love You More Studio Co. full-size project sleeve. This came out in one of their updates, I don't know, a few years, a couple weeks ago, and they're cats, so I had to have it. Absolutely love it. And the other piece of haul that I have here is the, also this sleeve. It's their Wizard of Oz sleeve. This is another full-size sleeve. And, you know, um, if you've been following me for quite for, for, for quite some time, you know that I am stitching several Wizard of the Oz pieces. Um, so I absolutely love this one. All right. So what was my first new start? My first new start was Garden of Erie by Plum Street Samplers. Um, I know I had talked about this probably early September that Stephanie from Stitch Goes My Heart here on Flosstube, she was hosting a sal for this. It is Eerie Sal, and I knew I had wanted to start this project soon, um, but it just took me two months to do it. So I joined her in her sal, but also Jessie Marie saw that I had talked about starting this soon, and her and I decided to start it together. Um, so we started this both on October 26th, and uh, I love this. I agonized over fabric, but I finally chose something. Um, the fabric I chose is an under the sea fabric in a 32 count linen in the color Nessie. And here is my tiny little start. I decided to start in the center with this project. So I'm working on the tree trunk and I believe it's a 68 stitches. I started it towards the end of Saturday night, so I didn't have much time, but I absolutely love this fabric. It is gorgeous. I love the blues and the greens, and I did a floss toss on it, and I think um, everything will look great on this. And um, I'm super excited that Jesse decided to start it, and it helped motivate me to go ahead and get this as a whip instead of a I wish I would work on it. Uh, or I wish I would start it project. Um, so yeah, and this is the full piece of fabric. I absolutely love it. There was some concern that maybe the green and the clouds would blend in. However, I positioned the fabric to where I think the green of the clouds will be up in the blue area. But even if it, uh, if it goes into the green modeling, I don't think there's an issue. I think everything will look just fine on that. My second new start is Toil and Trouble by by Plum Street Samplers. Um, both this one and Garden Erie I've had since last fall. I'm, I had every intention of starting them last fall and it never happened, but it happened this year. This happened to be my October high tea start. And um, so that was October 27th. I am using the fabric 32 count Lugana by Color and Cotton, and excuse me, no, it's a 32 count Jobelin Color and Cotton, and the color is Spellbook. And here's where I'm at with that. I also did a center start, and I use this for a Magical Stitches assignment, so it's only 200 stitches. As you can see, I have the witch's feet, and the her broom, and the top of the one of the uh, portions of what I'm calling the mansion. Um, so I absolutely love it. This is the full view of the fabric. Um, it's gorgeous, I think. I struggled last year with picking the fabric and then when I received this and pulled this fabric out a couple months ago, I thought it fit this pattern perfectly. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I'll make it work for more Magical Stitches assignments and it will get more love.
And my final new start was on Halloween, and that was Tiny Modernist Halloween Stitch Along. I believe this was their Halloween release in 2017. Um, I absolutely love it simply because um, it's on, it's rectangular. It's not, um, last. I believe last year she had um, a, like a mansion, and this year was her uh, pieces. It was four pieces that could be finished as drums or stitches once. I absolutely love this one. This one happens to be my favorite, so I thought, I've had it since last year. Let's go ahead and get it started this year. I am using the called for fabric, which is a 28 count Joblin in the color Stormy Gray. And this is where I'm at with it. I have been working on the border. This has come to uh, work with me as my lunchtime stitching this past week. So this is close to 300 stitches and I just need probably another hour and I will finish the border up. And I started the word, um, happy because it goes happy halloween across the the bottom and so um this is the h and i believe that is part of the p and um this is stitching up super super fast and um again since it's halloween i'm able to fit it into more magical stitches uh, assignments a little bit easier so we'll see how much more uh, i can get done on it by the end of this year so that is all of my new starts my whips my finishes. Um, let's go ahead and move on to retail therapy. Since it has been over a month since I've last done a video, I have quite a bit of retail therapy to share with you. So I'm going to hopefully go through it rather quickly. Um, the first things I have to show you is I had placed an order with That's So Kelly Co. on Etsy for a couple of her newer Bitsy Bobs, and I picked up two of them. The first one is this spider one. I fell in love with it. I am currently using it for my Halloween Quaker, um, but adorable. And then she also had put this autumn one up and I'm like, yes, please. Uh, the colors are perfect. So I picked that one up also. Then I had placed an order with so much to love for a couple of her project bags. You know, I love them. And as soon as I saw these, I had to have them. So this is the first one. It is Kitty Cats doing yoga. Yep. Oh my God, they're adorable. Um, the inside fabric is, is um, kitty, cop, uh, kitty cat paw prints. Super cute. So that was the first one. This is her standard size. And then I picked up one of her big bottom ones. I believe that's what it's called. And it is kitty cats in the movie theater. Oh my God. Gosh, I love them. Super, super cute. I love the kitty cats hiding their eyes. I love the one knitting. Ugh. But oh my gosh, absolutely love it. Had to have it. And then on the inside is just a multicolor paw print. Super love it. And the final project bag I have to show you is from Garon Toten Bags. I purchased my first bag from them while I was at StitchCon. I since then joined the Facebook group. I bought one other bag and then this one. And the one I have is oh, the Witches. And I thought it was a perfect Halloween bag. Um, the initial selling of these, they sold out. But then they found more fabric, so I said I would like one. This is a 12 by 13 size. It is... Um, gorgeous on the inside and I do use this to house my Halloween Quaker and that is on an 11 by 11 Q-snap and this fits in there perfectly. Back in September Dinky Dyes had put um in their Etsy shop, they put together some um, oops packs and I have never had the opportunity to purchase any, but then I decided to go ahead and check out the shop and I got lucky. So I think when I went in there, they had like five different packs left out of, I don't know, 10, I'm not sure. And I found three that I really liked. So I per uh, purchased these three. 
Um, that's the first one. And then, then, of course, they sent me little complimentary bits right there. Then I got this one. Love the colors. And then, yeah, this one. Uh, I just, I don't want to take them out of the plastic. I know there's a little bit of a glare. But they are all, uh, so, so it's, yeah, probably 10 packs because this one's 10, 3, and eight. Um, I tried to pick out colors that I thought I could easily incorporate into other projects, and they are all eight meters each. So now I want to show you all of my monthly club um, fabrics and threads that I have received. I actually have uh, two months worth of color and cotton to show you. Um, I get I used to get the 32 count Belfast linen. I am now getting 32 count Joblin. And I get both the primitives and the colors. The first one is a frog belly. It's getting a little blown out. It is a green, but it's on the deeper side. The next one is hickory. This is a really pretty, um, it's got some purple tones in it. It's really pretty. Then, I've got Merlot, gorgeous color, absolutely love it. Nice, pretty purplish pink. And then Morning Mist, which this probably just looks white to you, but it actually looks um, <clears throat> like a fog, like a morning mist. Really pretty. All right, so then I also got my Under the Sea fabrics, which I was... I do get a 32 count Belfast linen, <clears throat> but for this month I decided to get in the Joblin and the color is changing leaves and this is what it looks like. It's a little, it's a little lighter in the screen. It's a little deeper in person, um, but because it is a little bit on the, the wild side, I decided to get into Joblin so it would be a little bit more muted. And I have no idea what I will use this for. I don't know if I'll use it in smaller pieces. Have no idea, but it is very pretty. And the purplish and pinks are my color. Um, so I will find something to put on it. All right. Then the final thing I have to show you from my monthly clubs is uh, I received my Victorian motto uh, threads for this month. I do get both the primitives and the limited editions. Here are the limited edition primitives. Very pretty. Oh my goodness, love them. My goal next year is to use more of my own um, threads from the clubs. Then I also have just the regular limited edition ones. And here they are. Yep, love them. Beautiful autumn colors. Love them. Gorgeous. I had placed an order with Threads Entwined when she had done one of her sales. I can't remember if it was 25% off or 30% off. She is often doing sales, so please check her out and support her shop. Um, she is very well stocked in all the thread colors. Whenever I can't find something at one, two, three stitch, I know I can find it at her um, shop. But um, I went ahead and purchased uh, these following patterns. Um, Plum Street Samplers had some new ones come out, so I said yes. The first one is Goody Grimwood. Absolutely love her. She will be a 2020 start. I have Clementine. This will also be a 2020 start. I love that cat. Cute. And then I went ahead and also got Autumn Hill. Um, I just absolutely love these colors. I do not know if this one will be a 2020 star. Not sure yet, but it um, will be hanging out maybe until 2021. Love it. And then I went ahead and purchased um, the last Heart and Hand Square Dance, the last three months in the series, so now I have all of them. I'm thinking that this might be in 2020. 
not sure. I'm starting to think about 2020 plans, so that's why I'm thinking maybe. And then I went ahead and got this beauty, Heart Full of Gratitude. It is the last one in the Songbird Garden series by Cottage Garden Samplings. Yeah, Cottage Garden Samplings. Love it. This is a 2020 start. I had kitted it up um, at one, two, three stitch. I have all the threads in there and they're all weak style works. Love the colors. So that's everything I got from Threads and Twined. I had to place an order with Fiberlicious again because I kitted up Halloween Quaker for my mother for her birthday. She already knows she's getting it. Um, so I know fabric can uh, come by itself. So I figured since they're already dyeing something, let me pick something else out for myself. And this is a 36 count linen in the color ashes to ashes i love it it is um not overly modeled barely modeled but i got this because i am thinking i'm going to stitch the um witchy stitchers haunted mansion style on this i do i did participate by purchasing um but i haven't stitched it because i couldn't decide on the fabric so i think this is what i'm gonna go with it's a nice simple gray and it will go well with a Halloween piece. I had placed an order with Heartstring Sampler Shop on Etsy um, after Needlework Galleria. I had seen some of her new items come out so I went to her shop to see if I could get something and of course um, the, uh, the strainer ornaments that she had. Um, the strainer um, t-ball, t-ball. She was all sold out, so that's okay. Um, I found other things to get. I got this cute little canvas zip bag. It says, I rescue needlework supplies. I'm not a hoarder, I'm a hero. I also purchased a couple of patterns. Um, the first one is it's her Festive Little Fobs Stitching Edition. I thought they were really cute and they're all having to do with sewing, so yes, please. And then I had been eyeing this one ever since I went to um, Needleworkers Delight. I probably have been eyeing this since January, so I went ahead and got it. This is a Once Upon a Summer Huswife. And um, every time I go to Needleworkers, I pick it up and I put it back. So I went ahead and got it this time. And I would like to actually finish it so I can use it. Misty Purcell has Luminous Fiber Arts recently released a couple of new patterns and there's one that I had to have so I picked up her Cardinals Carol so so pretty and I picked up the threads and the little um the the rayon the rayon ribbon that she used in finishing it and then I have a piece of 36 count linen and soft porcelain and um, I'm on a 36 count so and I love her fabric so I went ahead and picked that up and um, I'm not sure if that's what this is stitched on but if not we'll we'll find something in the stash Several weeks ago, I was, I don't know if so, I saw something online or if I was just perusing the shop, but I went to Meridian Designs Etsy shop and I purchased the pattern of Sweet Maple. I think she is gorgeous. I don't know what fabric I'll stitch her on. Um, but then I also went ahead and got the pack of dinky dyes and all the little stuffies that you need to stitch this. And I did not realize this because I followed Jen Upton on Instagram and she was the model stitcher for this. And I think it's gorgeous. Um, maybe a 2020 start? Maybe. So I placed a couple orders with 123 Stitch over the past month, month and a half. And this is everything I have. I have the sulky thread that I need for um, Emily's house. This will be my first time using sulky, so I'm excited about it. Everyone raves about it. I had also picked up some Glisten Gloss blending thread. Um, I am planning on using this for... Dorothy's, it's a Silver Creek Samplers, Dorothy's, Dorothy's 
I can't remember the name, but she uses Red Krennic. I am going to use this blending thread. And I had mentioned this blending thread um, the last time I showed my Santa Train stocking because that's what I was using um, on it. And I was raving about this. You use this um, with a strand of DMC. Um, even if you don't have DMC, um, you probably could just use like three strands because on the train stocking, I was using two strands of this plus one strand of DMC. And what I love about this is that it does not shred. Love it, love it, love it. I got it from... Um, one, two, three stitch. You can just put in glisten gloss and see all the color. Put in glisten gloss a blending thread and all the colors they have will come up. But love it. All right. I went ahead. This was on sale, so I picked it up. I've been eyeing this ever since Missy revealed this last year. Snow many friends. Love it. And then I went ahead and purchased all the Weeks Dye Works. There are a bunch of DMCs, but I just got the Weeks Dye Works to go with that. I might even have some of that fabric in my stash. And then I went ahead and got Gobble Gob by Plum Street Samplers. Um, I was on the fence about stitching this until Michelle Bendy Stitchy, um, stitched hers and shared her conversion. I loved it as brighter colors, so I bought it. And then what I went ahead and did is I purchased three of the colors that she used that I loved, okay? And then I have a 36 count um, linen in the color Legacy. I cannot remember what I bought this for. It will come to me. Then I wanted to try some lakeside linen, so I found a couple of pieces. Uh, the first one is a 36 count vintage buttercream. Nice, pretty neutral. It's a little deeper in person. And then I have this small piece of 36 count copper. Um, it's a little blown out on screen. It's a little deeper in person, but love it. So that's everything from one, two, three stitch. House of Ming on Instagram. You know, I've purchased a few of her needle minders in the past, and a couple weeks ago, she had a few more that I was interested in, so then I went ahead and picked them up. I have Han Solo and Leia to go with my Luke that I already have that I won in a Michelle um, Bendy Stitchy auction. And then I went ahead and got Chewbacca, and I have Alice um, in Wonderland. And please note, guys, these are very, these can be fragile, and as I was pulling them out of the plastic, I broke her bow. So um, some parts are fragile, but still, she's adorable. I will use her and love her. And the last thing I purchased is um, Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. On her last um, update video, she had, first of all, gave me a wonderful shout out. Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate it. It, it surprised me, and um, I just adore you. I've been watching you for quite some time, and so thank you. But she commented how I enabled her with some stuff on my videos. Well, she enabled me in return, and I purchased from Summer House Stitchworks. It's Fragments in Time, and it's celebrating sampler motifs. And so there's number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. They are super cute. I know she mentioned that she was having a hard time finding them, that she did find hers on eBay from a seller. I found mine at Stony Creek online. And uh, they had said they had all eight in stock, so I ordered them. And then I did get an email saying that, that they were short too, and that they would mail my order as soon as um, their stock came back in. And I, I had it within a few days after that email they sent to me, so. Thank you, Jesse, for enabling me in return. All right, guys, so that is all of my retail therapy. 
The next thing I wanted to mention is that I received in the mail a few weeks ago um, a belated birthday present from my mother. And um, everything is just way too cute. Uh, the first thing that was in the package was she sent me um, a package of John James needles. These are my favorite needles to stitch with. So I have them. She sent me this adorable needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. Love it. Kitties, kitties. Yes, yes, yes. And then she sent me these absolutely gorgeous um, stitching knitting markers. They are from Three by the Sea Designs, and they are just stunning. I absolutely love them. You know I, um, I'm a knitter, and uh, these are super, super cute. Nice um, fall themed, just super adorable. Um, look at that, a little, little, looks like a little farm truck. Um, I have gotten back into knitting again since I finally, um, I haven't stopped knitting like some people think I have. They think I've stopped knitting and I haven't. And what happened was there's a shawl that I am knitting that I may constantly making mistakes on. And I had to sit down and, and rip out and figure out what my mistake was. And now I'm cruising on it. So I am will then start incorporating these into my um, projects because these are like little progress keepers. So thank you, Mom. I really, really love it and appreciate every single little item that you included. All right, everyone. So that is everything. I hope... Um, you have stuck with me. I know that this has been probably on going to be on the longish side. Um, but I also want to say thank you to every single one of you who continues to watch, to like my videos, to my new subscribers, um, everyone who comments. I, I read and respond to every single one of my comments. And I just truly, really appreciate you and thank you. And it's hard to believe, but I have been making floss tube videos now for one year. My one year floss tube anniversary was on October 30th. And this is actually floss tube number 23. Um, I've also done a handful of special editions and a couple of stitch with me's in this past year. And I can't believe the year has flown by, that I am still here. Um, I love it. I love um, interacting with every single one of you. So I look forward to putting out more videos in the future. And hopefully more and more of you will, will comment and in interact with me. And so we can all get to know each other a little bit more. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for everyone who has who subscribed from the very beginning and has stuck with me for the past year. Um, thank you. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope you have a wonderful stitchy week. I'll be back in one to two weeks. Um, life should calm down a little bit more for us here at the home with the kitties. And so um, I plan on being back here more often than I have in the past couple of months. I hope you all have um, enjoyed the extra hour in your day today and that you got a little extra stitchy time. And so with that, I will catch with you guys later. Um, and until next time, happy stitching. Bye.